What's going on, guys? Welcome to another special edition of Critics Talk. I'm one of your hosts, Clep Napier, and I'm here with my co-host, Wade Swift. And we are here to talk about the, the Academy Oscars. Awards. The Oscars, Oscars, Academies, like either or, same no thing. Ninety second, right? Yeah. Ninety, yep. ninety two annual long years that we have been celebrating Hollywood. film, Hollywood film. Um, I, let's. What did you think overall? What did you think of the? the, the I'm song? not gonna lie, like this is one of the first years that I like actually like was really invested in like the award shows. Like, I've always kind of watched them, but mm-hmm. I was never so like you know what I mean, like passionate about it this year was like the real big year where every one of them i was like kind of into them i thought the oscars was really good this year um i'm not gonna lie i thought the golden globes were a little bit better i enjoyed really? them a little more i don't i think the production on the oscars is the best mm-hmm. but there was just like a wide array of people winning that was the one thing that kind of killed it for me this year that it was just like it was like three people that won yeah so in my experience i, I watch the oscars every year i've always been a fan i'm a huge fan of award shows period uh, I know you're not a fan of the Grammys, but I, I I get into the Grammys as well. No, I used to be into the Grammys. Yeah. The last few years, they kind of lost me a little bit. So I watching this one, I honestly can say that this was probably one of the most interesting Oscars that I have seen in a very 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 long time. And I love the fact that this year they included a lot of music. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna ask you that. Yeah, because like, I feel like that's not something that they usually do a lot of. They never do that. More, it's more of a ceremony um, kind of vibe, kind of feel. It gets a little boring, and by the time that 10, 10 o'clock, 10.30 hits, you're already done. You're already yeah. ready to change the channel. But for some reason, like this year, it was live. The intro was insane. Yeah. Janelle Monet, she came out, murdered Killed it. it. Um, and, and Steve then, Martin and Chris Rock came out. They murdered it. Murdered it. it. Um, I mean, and this is, a, what, second year in a row that they went without a host. I like the no host idea, to be honest. I think they should just get the entire industry involved like they do like they're doing yeah um, it's a celebration of all of them and their peers so i think that they should be the ones that kind of entertain again you yeah know what i mean to kind of keep this thing going but yeah I, th- I think this one particularly was a great 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 a great one um opposed to the the ones they've done in the past last year was good too and they didn't have a host but sometimes the, like i feel like it's not something they should like dedicate either or like to the no they like they shouldn't be a slave to the like no host or the host like Cause there's sometimes when there's like people that enter Hollywood that are like really like interesting, like 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 if someone like a Robin Williams comes along, yeah, you might want to give him like you know like let him host real quick and see how it is. I feel like it's people like Ricky Gervais that kind of like fucked it up, oh. like because they come out and they like make the awards look like yeah. shit and they shit on all the celebrities, which I is fine that. that's, to yeah. a degree, mm-hmm. but like. He took it too far this year, and I think that's the type of shit that makes them be like, you know what? Like, we're not gonna give some guy like the reins to this, like the whole the, the whole night. Do you think? Do you think Kevin Hart's eventually coming? Do I you? mean, I was pretty pissed that he like stepped yeah. out. I didn't think that yeah. he needed to feed into the like the backlash. Um, I think that yeah. like he he was given the opportunity, he should have took it. I get why he stepped down, yeah. and like you gotta respect the decision. But I thought he would have been a great host. I think I, yeah, I think he'll be a great host overall. Period, and, and you know he's gonna do something with The Rock. He's gonna definitely yeah, and everything. he's got all these like Hollywood yeah. friends that he like he could come link with. You know what I mean? Um, I think Chris Rock would be a dope host. I think The Rock would be a dope host. I mean, yeah. uh, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah, I thought Chris Rock was great. Him well, Chris Steve Rock Martin. has hosted already before. He did a great job when he did. Yeah. It. Oh yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, um, you're right. I don't remember that far back with Steve Martin, but I'm pretty. Steve sure Martin's always super funny. He probably man. murdered it as well I love too. Steve Martin. Um, but yeah, I I bring that up because like I said, like they've been going with the no host thing ever since the whole Kevin Hart scandal, the stupid thing went down, and uh, he refused to accept. Uh, he refused to apologize in order to accept, you know, the opportunity. But I think eventually he's gonna come. I think when he said the timing is right, oh we, yeah, we right. will eventually see Kevin Hart host the, the uh, Academy Awards. I'd be Award. here for it. Um, like I said, I'm not opposed to the, the hosting yeah. like dynamic at mm-hmm. all. So let, let's let's jump right into it though. Um, first night of the award, uh, I mean, first award of the night uh, was a supporting actor uh, uh, award, and the nominees in this one were pretty tough. I'm not gonna lie. I, I didn't know. I didn't know who was gonna take this. I was kind of on the edge of my seat. Um, all of the movies were good, and and all of the, the nominees in it were good. Um, 
we, I was confused at first because when I saw Tom Hanks, I was like, I thought it was like a starring role. Yeah. But he's just, he's not the main character in that movie. Yeah, because the story is told through someone who is a journalist. A book yeah. Or writing an article, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. so he is technically a supporting actor, but that threw me off because I like, I think I went to the, the kitchen to grab a drink or something and then I came <laughs> back and then I was like, wait, they're already getting into the main roles? Yeah, yeah. But he <laughs> is a supporting. But yeah, no, this was one of the most like potent ones, uh, categories that we had. So we had. We got Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. Tom Hanks, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Hopkins for The Two Popes, Al Pacino, The Irishman, and Joe Pesci, The Irishman. Um, I was, with this one, I was kind of cool with whoever. Yeah. Like, like, I wouldn't have been upset at any one of these people. Yeah, yeah you, 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 got, you were kind of right about that. I mean, like I said, um, I, I mean, honestly... I really wanted Pesci to, to bring something home like, at all of these award shows. I would have been okay with. It. I mean, even Pacino though. I mean, I he know. steals that movie. The Irishman. Uh, a lot of people like you know Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, but Al Pacino like literally carries this movie. No, um, he, him and him and Pesci absolutely carry that film, one hundred percent. But and even Hanks. I mean, he's a G. He's a, he's a and OG, he transforms. You know I mean? he's a, you you gotta you gotta give them credit when they transform into the role. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hit that. So Brad Pitt takes this home. Winner once upon a time in Hollywood. Which he's not a bad role. He murders that role. Pretty sure he swept the award shows for that category as well. I haven't seen him lose that once. Oh, the uh, I know he won the supporting. Golden Globe. He won the oh, SAG for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think he did. This might have been a clean sweep for him. Mm. We might have to look that up. But um, yeah, I mean. I loved it. I thought it was watching it. I remember telling you, like, mm -hmm. it's so funny seeing Brad Pitt as like a side guy. He's side like the guy. sidekick. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he's usually like the guy that you show up and you, you bought the tickets for. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's funny to kind of see him be like someone's patsy. And he killed it last year with movies. He killed it. Yeah. He had that. He had Ad Astra. Um, well, he was in something else, too. Once upon a time, Ad Astra. And I can't remember, but I know he definitely was the leading man. And he in, killed in all that the, Astra. In all the films that he was doing last year. So, yeah, shout out to Brad Pitt, you know what I mean, for sweeping that, that whole category all year. But mm -hmm. um, And then moving along to the next category, which, I mean, this one was a no-brainer to me. When I saw this and I saw the nominees in it, I was kind of like... There's really? no competition. Like, really? As far as the story and the depth of it. So. A animated feature. I mean, do we even need to read these nominees? Yeah, so we got The Missing Link. <laughs> We got Claws, which was the Netflix Christmas special. Yeah. I Lost My Body and uh, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, and, of course, the winner, Toy, Toy Story, Story 4. <laughs> it was kind of a no-brainer. Definitely um, a no-brainer. If you saw the movie, if you saw any of the other movies, I mean, it was, like, light years ahead of the competition. Um, I mean, it's Toy Story. It's, yeah. It, it's, it's one of the most epic franchises in, like, animated history. So, um, yeah, we kind of figured that one was going to win. It was good to see them win. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, like I, it was a no brainer for me. Like you said, Toy Story's always been ahead of the game, animation wise, story wise. Mm -hmm. There's never been anything like it in a cartoon. Uh, Character development. Oh yeah, it's, un, it's insane. And the cast, the cast, is, and it always gets better. The cast always gets better. Uh, Toy Absolutely. Story Four knocks this out the park. Um, when I saw that, I almost laughed because it was a joke. Uh, that that it's it was like, up against anything. And that might have been one of the best in the franchise. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that's saying a lot. Yeah. So um, moving along to another animated feature, which was very, I don't even, th it's weird because like, it's cool that these guys get nominated because they're all indie, indie guys, but the fact that they're being recognized on such a higher, higher level and no one even, I'm pretty sure most, most people didn't even see any of these movies. For short. Um, yeah, yeah, for so short. this was for animated short. Um, the nominees, I, I've never even heard any of these movies only except for one of them, which was Hair Love, which was the winner. Um, and the only reason I heard of that was because of an article that I was working on about the guy who wrote and directed it, who was an ex-NFL player. Uh, he, worked, he played for the Ravens. He played for Carolina. He played for Cincinnati. Um, and I thought it was intriguing that, you know, he switched from that to this. His name was Matt Cherry. Um, yep. I, I, I thought I thought it was a great take on, you know, it was about a uh, single dad raising his daughter uh, and, and, and having to deal with, you know, doing her hair <laughs> and, and i thought it was cute it was uh relatable it was uh you which know. is a very interesting topic like if yeah. you, it's like super relatable if you ever had a mm -hmm. daughter i always thought it was interesting when i would see like my dad 
like brushing my sister's hair and shit. And I'm just like, yeah, that's crazy that like as a dad, you're like, mm-hmm. you have to like groom your daughter. You have to like learn that trade. Yeah. So that's like definitely a dope concept that I'm fine with, like that I'm glad finally got uh, in the spotlight mm-hmm. and they won. So that's really dope too. Yeah. So shout out to Matt Trey for that um, animated short. Glad it got some uh, it got some love. Maybe they'll get a feature out of it. Maybe they'll get some funding. Maybe we'll get a live action. Who doesn't? Who knows? Maybe he'll get another deal to do something different. And then obviously the story behind that, mm-hmm. um, DeAndre Arnold. I know you are familiar with that story. If you guys aren't, it's the um, there was a kid in a Texas high school. He got banned from yep. um, attending his prom and his graduation on the contingency that he like he had to cut his dreadlocks yeah and he refused to so he obviously wasn't allowed there so uh was it matthew cherry yeah invited him as his guest uh at the oscars last night so i mean it's pretty dope you don't get that is dope you miss your graduation your prom but you get to go to the oscars i'll take the i'll take the oscars i'll take the oscars every time (laughs) thank you very much yeah yeah thank you come again this world i tell you man if it wasn't for the entertainment to escape i don't know what we'd do yeah and it's like it's crazy it's full circle like you think you're down and out and you know you for standing up for what you believe in but it all pays off in the end so shout out to them shout out to matthew cherry shout out to deandre like dope story um yeah, good moment in, for the Oscars. Yeah. So moving along, this one, uh, this next one, original screenplay. I'm not gonna lie, shocked the hell out of me uh, because me too. Tarantino was in it, and and Mendez, yeah, and Mende- yeah, Mendez yeah. was kind of cleaning house prior to this yeah. award show. Yeah, they kind of put a stop to the Mendez like <sighs> shit show that has been the award shows. I, I'm, I, and I don't even want to talk bad about the whole 1917 thing. I just, it just. It's it's just winning and winning and winning. But that's what it was for Parasite last yeah. night. Parasite, Parasite was a cool thing, being that it was the first international film to actually just come in and just sweep, you know, the Oscars. It's never been done before. I've never seen it, and um, I just thought it was a good thing. But original screenplay, um, I for sure thought that Tarantino was going to take this because he always usually takes that. Um, I believe he won the Golden Globe for it, and. Um, Bong Bong Joon Ho for uh, Parasite. He took it, which was pretty much the shocker of the the night. Like this guy was pretty much swept the Oscars. Yeah, and I mean some um, of the other nominees. You got Ryan Johnson, Knives Out, Noah Baumbach, Mar- Marriage Story, mm-hmm. Sam Mendes, and uh, Christy Wilson Kearns for 1917, and obviously Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I mean, it's a pretty stacked lineup. Yeah. So for um, a foreign film that's not even in the language to pull that one out, like. That's, I mean, it's historical. It was historical. Um, I mean, he broke records last night. So, mm. um, yeah, I mean, I honestly thought Sam Mendes was going to win that. It was, I thought it was between him and, and Quentin. Um, I'm not upset uh, to not see Quentin win, but um, I am kind of glad to see the 1917 run a little bit. Like, I, I yeah. love the movie, and I think it's a great film. Yeah. But I just don't like that. I don't like that one movie's sweeping awards. I hate should, yeah. seeing that. Yeah. I like to see it like kind of spread out a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, because not all, not not one movie can dominate in one area. Yeah, like in all. I'm sorry, in all areas. Like you got to think about it. Um, and there's a lot of things that we're gonna get into once we talk about those topics. But I I completely agree with you on that. Like one movie should not be dominating all, all areas. And for Parasite, it's been a slow burn for these award shows. Mm-hmm. It looked like it was just going to be a full-blown Joker 1917 oh, clean I, sweep I, through all the award shows. That's what it was looking like. Yeah. And last night kind of put a halt to that. I mean, Parasite just took over. Um, so what do we do? Should we do production design? No, let's go on to the next one, adapt the screenplay, because I really did want to talk into this. I want to dive into this one because I was very shocked at this one. Um, not saying that this guy is not, not talented, because uh, he's one of my favorite directors, and one of, he's a Marvel director at, at one point, uh, and character. Taika Waititi uh, takes a Jojo sp- Rabbit. Yeah, Jojo Rabbit, which was very, very shocking just because it was very satire. Yeah. Uh, it's an adaptation of a, a, a book uh, by uh, a female, Christine Liu Nen- Nens. I can't really say that last name. I always put your names on here. Uh, Caging Skies is the name of it. Um, and I just. Just because what it's about and the topic that it touches and it's like making a joke about, you know, Holocaust and yeah, yeah, Hitler. Yeah. And uh, I was very shocked that this was getting the praises that it was getting. But Taika is a very, very talented director and writer. So shout out to him for that. Um, what did you think? I mean, who he was up against? I just. 
he had, he was up against the Irishman guy. He was up against Todd Phillips, the Joker. Uh, he was up against two popes. Greta Gerwig for Little Women. Little I women. thought Little Women was going to do a little better last oh, night. They, they won a few. They won like production design or no, it was costume design. Which was, it's kind of like a, you're like throwing them a bone. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all that was. That's how I. Yeah, production. That was the one. That's actually the next one they won. That. Uh, yeah. Um, actually, no. Production design went to uh, Once Upon a Time. Well, no, that's why I said it was costume design. Uh, yeah. Production. I thought once. We'll, we'll, get, we'll just get into that real quick. I, I mean, I thought that was kind of well deserving. Uh, once Upon a Time was like. Yeah. I don't know. I was watching that when I was watching that movie. I'm like, how did they really transform LA like yeah. that? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, if you've ever been to like. Beverly Hills or anything like that. A lot of LA is like very old school. Like it, they keep those same like vintage vibes. So for the most part, it's not. But they really transformed the shit out of that. Like so. I, I mean, all props to them. They should have won that. That was Barbara Lang and uh, Nancy Hyde for uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Um. So we'll do what the live action short. No, let's let's uh let's jump down to a uh, supporting actress. Oh yeah, I mean th- this one was kind of this was another tough one. I was very, very t- yeah. A lot of yeah. these, I was kind of like, "Oh, this one's gonna win," and yeah. I was right. This was one of the ones that I was like, "I don't know who the fuck is." But gonna I kind of, I listen. I kind of knew Laura Dern was gonna win. She's been winning in this category for the other award shows, so I, I do agree with you on that. Um, sense. and yeah, I, 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 I kind of low key knew she was gonna take this award. Um, no one else really stood out. I mean, she oh, was, no, you're crazy. She was going crazy. against Scarlett Johansson, who's in the Marriage Story, but I don't think Scarlett Johansson would have won for Jojo Rabbit if she won. She would have won for Marriage Story. I thought she did really good in Jojo Rabbit. Yeah? I thought she had a really good German accent, Oh, was she? which is, like, not easy to do. Yeah. Um, and then all the other, some of the other nominees, you got Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. I thought she did a fantastic job in that. What about Margot Robbie and Bombshell? Mar- I have not seen Bombshell yeah. yet. I was just telling someone last night I need to see that like as soon as possible. Yeah, that's my. Did you that's see my Bombshell? Goal, so I didn't see Bombshell either. I need to see Bombshell. I I I, I heard Margot and um, uh, Charlize were incredible in that. Charlize is Charlize got anyway. nominated for another one, I believe. Um, and then Florence Pugh for Little Women, which yeah. um, yeah, again, that was a really tough category. You know, you know what it was good to see though, the people who were being nominated and being brought up in this you know pristine award show are people who are currently working like you see them do the serious stuff you see them do the superhero yes. stuff you see them do the action stuff like they're these people are actually in the business right now and they're all relevant and they're all working so when you see these people get nominated you're like oh shit this is gonna be a tough like yeah a tough you know what i mean tough category to choose a winner um, but nah, shout out to Laura Dern because I think she kind of deserved it because nah, she she made me feel like I fucking couldn't stand her in marriage story. Like I was like, wow, she's doing her job. No, literally. And I think <laughs> we're with a few people that like recognize that. I think yeah. a lot of people were like, I thought she was terrible. I didn't like her. And I'm like, well, if you didn't like her, like if you disliked her, she did, her she did something right. Because yep. like if there, if she does, if, if, if an actress or an actor does a terrible job, you're going to be. Unbothered, like you're gonna be indifferent to their character. Yeah, they don't really make an effect on you. Mm-hmm. If you love them or hate them, they did their job. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, shout out to Laura Dern. Um, next up, uh, I mean, these are the little throwaway categories: the sound editing. I don't understand how they can do sound mixing and sound editing and it not be like tied into the same. They did a few of those last night where I was like, kind of the same shit, but you just switched it up a little bit. Yeah, like sound mixing went to 1917, of course, and then sound editing went to Ford versus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, someone tell me what is the difference, please. Like, I don't want to shit on anybody's position, but please tell me what really is the difference. Um, I, 1917 wh- also took. What I will say about that though is, is like. I do respect those categories because it's like in Hollywood, there's a lot of unsung heroes. There's a lot of people that are out there putting in time and effort and they're putting in the man hours and yeah. they deserve to get their their recognition. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's absolutely. why I do kind of fuck with those categories because mm-hmm. it's it's like these the little guys get to shine a little bit. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Because those are the people that no one's talking about the, the, the sound mixer or the fucking sound editor. Like it's, it's, or even it's costume de- design. Exactly. Or even production design. But they have a role in these films, yeah. and they really do. Like the, Costume design is really a tough one. Like A lot of these movies, 
without the costume design, these movies aren't the same. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's tough. Like, casting is another one that I think is a really cool, oh, unsung yeah. category yeah. where it's like, that's someone's job to go find the right people for the roles. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, I, I get the little the little guy category. And, this, and the cinematography as well, which uh, 1917 took. Which I thought was super deserving. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, have you seen 1917? I, I I've have not seen anything outside of like promo clips and and, and trailer. And I think that's why you're very like I, not with it. I mean, it looks good. Uh, uh, Dunkirk. It reminds me of Dunkirk. Is it better than Dunkirk? I mean, it's a completely different type film. I mean, uh, visually, it's more like a it's more like a Saving Private Ryan almost. Oh, so you're in the war. You're in the war. Well, I mean, Dunkirk was like that, but Dunkirk just didn't have a lot of story. It didn't have a lot of dialogue. Yeah. This kind of has more. And then he, the fact that uh, Mendez shot it in like one, it's one shot basically. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that in itself is like impressive as fuck. That is that is pretty impressive. Uh, Lighthouse was in that though. You saw that. What yeah. You I mean, that was again. This was a, this was a really good category. I, mm-hmm. I like this. Like, I, and I'm big on cinematography. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think that is a huge. Yeah. That's another one of those kind of. In Hollywood, it's not unsung, but as far as like viewers and audiences, I think they think the cinematographer is the director. Yeah. I think a lot of people think, think it's the that. same shit. It's like, not it's the same like, thing. And it's like, no, the cinematographer is actually yeah. kind of the guy who's putting in more of the visual work yep. as far as the angles and all of that yep. goes. Um, like, obviously, the director kind of leads you in the right direction, but you hear in a lot of interviews with these directors, a lot of times they kind of let their cinematographer just go to work. Yeah. And they trust the vision, mm-hmm. that they share the same vision. You know yeah. What I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I thought 1917 should have won that. I don't really, I didn't. Lighthouse probably would have been the only. Well, Once other Upon one. a Time was in there as well. Yeah, but for me, Once Upon a Time, like I loved Once Upon a Time. Yeah, but I did for too. me, like it was production design is one of the ones which they won. Mm-hmm. That's what really like was a home run with that. I, I thought the screenplay was great. I thought it's a fantastic screenplay, mm-hmm. and more so is the performances. That's why I'm kind of surprised that Cap didn't, that DiCaprio didn't win any award for his performance in that. Mm-hmm. But he had a really tough year as far as the competition. Yeah. There was a lot of potent competition out there in that category. Um, so it's not surprising to see like Pitt kind of cleaning house as far as that goes. I think Tarantino won uh, Best Screenplay in a few of the award shows. I know he won the Golden Globe for it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was good to see. Let's hop down to uh, visual effects because this one I had a problem with. Of course you did. Uh, you know Cause why. Because your, your squad didn't fucking win. Hey. So we got uh, the visual effects. We got Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker. I don't give a fuck about that. No surprise there. Uh, Lion King. No ah. surprise there. Yeah, but I wouldn't, ah, I, come I wouldn't on. give it to Lion King. You wouldn't give it to them, but they got to be nominated. Like, Of, of course. They got to be nominated. that type of a yeah, film, like live action nominated. kind of, like, in the, like visual effects were out of this park. I mean, we're out of the park with um. that one. Um, and then The Irishman and... Uh, of course, you're uh, the guys that took the L, uh, the Avengers. Big L. That's a big L. That's a big L. Because I, when I saw them in that category, I was like, oh, they got no that. Brainer. No yeah, brainer, right? Like, yeah, that's we all, them. 1917 ended up winning it. For me, I'm not going to lie I want to know what you think. I want to know what you think. This is going to be one of the things that I'm going to allude to. But for me, in like basketball and football and sports, there's mm-hmm. these things called makeup calls. Okay. Have you ever heard that expression? No. So basically, for everyone back at home, um, a makeup call is when like a referee will miss a call, and then something will happen on the other side, and they'll call something that didn't happen against the other people to kind of even the score. So they missed one here, and then they'll like help them on the other side with a makeup call. Mm. And I think there was a lot of makeup awards last night as far as, mm. well, we're not going to give them this. So let's throw them a bone. We'll yeah. give them production design. We'll yeah. give them sound editing. I agree. We'll give them visual effects. I totally agree with and that. And I think they did not, they, like the Oscars did not give any love to 1917, which their contemporaries, all the other award shows, mm-hmm. showed a lot of love to yeah, 1917. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they didn't get best screenplay. They didn't get best picture. They didn't get, like, they didn't get all the awards that they were they winning, were winning in the other award awards. shows. Yeah. So I think in this one, they ended up winning best visual effects, which you can't be mad at it, but. I would have gave it to Avengers, um, and I think this is one of those we got to give this to 1917. Yeah. We're kind of robbing them over here. I and the reason I feel that way, and it has nothing to do with yes, I'm very biased. I love Marvel. very biased. If I love, anyone doesn't know him, he's, I, he's I, extremely biased. I love category. I love Marvel, but at the end of the day, you got to look at you got to look at the work. Like you have a live action movie that's a live action movie, and I'm pretty sure 1917 is a lot more live action than visual effects. 
and then you have you got a lot of explosions. You got a lot of that but, type of shit. But that, but that is also special effects. That's 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 practical effects, mm. unless that's all CGI. It's, I think it's the same thing though, isn't it? Not as far as the category goes. I, I, I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't know. I can't speak on that. But what I'm saying is, when you take a human being who portrays a, a image that's not even there, and you put this image within live action, and it looks almost real. You're talking about Thanos. Thanos, Hulk. Yeah. I'm just looking. When they say visual effects, I'm looking at wow. When they can de-age a human being, yeah. like even the Irishman. Well, that's why the Irishman was yeah, there. You know what I mean? But nobody does it like Disney. I mean, no, no, no. That. And and they were horrible at it. Yeah. To be so I just. So. I felt like Avengers got robbed. I really do feel like Avengers got robbed on that note. But, you know, the Oscars have never been generous to anything comic booky. Um, that's true. And so that's where I stand with that. I mean. That's fair. You know. Um, so let's skip the. I mean, obviously, one of the bigger ones of the night was uh, international film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, These guys, man. They're... We got Pain and Glory, Les Miserables, uh, Honeyland, Corpus Christi, and, of course, the winner. No surprise here, Parasite. Which everybody was talking about all night on I the mean, red that carpet. Was, yeah, absolutely. On the red carpet, everyone was talking about this film. And like like I said, with them at the award shows, it's kind of been a slow burn. Mm. Because like we've never seen a foreign film kind of do the nut like sweep, uh, like do numbers at these award shows like we saw with this. Yeah. Um, so like it was like each award show they like progressively started winning more and more awards and I was like holy yeah. shit this this parasite like they're really starting to like clean the house people with these were talking shows. about them before the awards and show. I think it came full circle here at the Oscars they really just kind of won all the major ones uh, they they won this category um, so international film no surprise there mm-hmm. and um, you know what I liked about uh, uh, Bong Joon he. He came out repping, man. Like, he wouldn't speak English at all. He brought a translator, and he could speak English, but he brought a translator anyways. He would much rather talk to his people and allow us to get the translation than him talk Are to Are you us. sure that he can speak, like, fluent yeah, English? He sp- well, he spoke English. I know he, he can he speak He said certain English. things, but I think he just practiced those. I, as I his... looked at it as he was repping. I, I don't know if he can not speak English, but I... I don't think he can. I don't know. I've heard him speak a little bit of English. No, even he said he, certain things. But I think, he, I think man. he did that as a sign of respect. Like, yeah. let me learn this because that's easy to learn a couple names real quick. Mm-hmm. But to learn like a fluent, like I'm gonna go give an award, yeah, ser- yeah. Like, like a thank you speech. Yeah. I mean, that's a little more difficult. But he also had his interpreter on the red ra- carpet. I think he was definitely rapping. Yeah, he was definitely rapping. But I, Champion. I don't know if he can speak fluent like that. Yeah, he had his he had his interpreter on the red carpet as well. And I would, um, ra- yeah, and I would rather him be comfortable. And I think that's yeah, what he yeah, wanted to be. I thought it was brilliant. I hats off to him. I, I like the fact that he, if if it wasn't what it was, and I'm taking it a different way, I like that he went out there and did that. I thought it was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, he was repping. He he went in and he he swept. <laughs> so we're gonna keep it moving. Uh, I know original, you like this one. Original score. Yeah. I'm big on scores. Yeah. Like Hans Zimmer is like the goat of goats. I, a lot of you guys might not even know who he is. Yeah. Hans Zimmer is like one of my favorite like people on earth, musician. <laughs> uh, so I'm big on scores. Um, so this one was a big one for me. So we got John Williams for the Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, which was fantastic. That was mm. probably one of the best aspects of the film. Uh, that's kind of like one of the best aspects of any Star Wars film. Like I think they're the scores are always like but they drive it. But they're always, I mean, at this point they're pretty much using the same. It's the same shit, but it because they want to keep it's branding now. Yeah, it's of course. Like, you know, what I mean, we it's that vintage. It's like Wonder Woman. Yeah, like, yeah. Hans Zimmer created Wonder Woman theme. If you guys don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, he tapped out on the movies, but they still use his like Wonder Woman rendition for all yep. of her shit. That's yeah. like her official theme. Yep. Um, so obviously we got Thomas Newman for um, 1917, yep. and then uh, Randy Newman, who like who did all the famous Toy Story scores. He's done a lot of like really cool, like witty. Uh, he did um, Meet the Fuck. No, uh, what's the original one? Meet the Parents. Meet the parents. Um, so he always has those like cool like family ones. Mm-hmm. I thought he did a really good job with Marriage Story. Mm-hmm. Um, who do we got? Alexandre Desplat. 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 Uh, we probably butchered that. Sorry for that. Um, <laughs> li- for Little Women, and then we got Hildur Gudenater for uh, Joker, which which was kind of a no brainer. Yeah, she yeah, like yeah. Uh, knocked it out the park with that, and um, no surprise there. She's, that, she's been sweeping all. all, all yeah, all and I mean. Well. One of the most chilling scores I've ever heard, and uh, she really knocked it out of the park with that. That it was a driving force in that film. I can't really imagine the film without it, to be honest. Yeah. It's one of those films that when you like pull it out, you're like, 
would this film have been the same? We don't know. But I think she did a fantastic job for that, and I mean, she deserves all the all the recognition. She's gonna be getting a lot, a lot more work. A lot. A oh lot, my lot, god, lot absolutely, work. and I'm happy for her. I'm mm-hmm. glad that she is. Uh, and then uh, we had original song, which um, this is another no surprise. Here. He's been winning all. Just Pretty sweeping, sure he swept for this, yeah. Which this category was kind of weak, to be honest. Uh, there really wasn't anything in that that I because even this song, the Toy Story one. Well, no, but even this song. It wasn't that you won, got a friend of me. Yeah, I know, but but that's from the older one. No, I know, but that's yeah. like a home run. That's one of those ones that. But even this one, the one that won the uh, the Rocket Man song, that wasn't a standout song to me in that movie. Like the movie alone was kind of dull to me, but even that song wasn't a standout song in that movie. I was still attached to the oldies and goodies, like Rocket Man. Yeah, <laughs> so to see him in this category and win felt like what you said, like. Throw him, throw him a bone. Mm-hmm. I mean, the song came out last year. What else is there other than Toy Story 4 Breakthrough, which was a cool movie? But even that song didn't stand out in that movie. Like, I don't even remember that song in that movie. I, I didn't even know it, that it, the it, star of the movie sang that song. I feel like if it wasn't uh, Elton, it probably would have been um, the stand up song from Harriet. I thought that, that was kind of like a driving. That was a standout song. Yeah. And, and the first time I really even heard it was at the. And she the, performed at, it live. At, yeah, yeah, at the awards, and she murdered it. Yeah. Um, so I, I honestly think that maybe that song, either, even the Frozen song, wasn't even that was bad. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, w- what's the original one? Uh, Let it go. Let it go. It definitely wasn't that. Did you see the performance for this one? Yeah, I liked it. I like the idea. I like the concept of like using different languages the, to do different the little like. Were very pitchy. Yeah, some of them were like shitting on the rest oh. of them. Like some, like there was a few where you were like, "Oh, that's not bad," and then someone would come right after her and absolutely leave her in her dust. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, they, they, that felt like a competition bad. a little bit. Yeah, it did. There was, yeah, there was like one that I don't remember what she was rapping, but she. she I think was, it was like the Norwegian one where she, she had like left, three words and she like it was like she went all the yep. way up. I was like, "Damn, you're definitely flexing on the rest." Of these and then girls. they had like, like this girl with this ominous hum in the background, and she was so flat. It was just not a good look. Damn, Keith it is going in on these ladies. It was right not now. a good look. I'm sorry, it just wasn't a good look. Um, I, I was a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea. I like what they were trying to do. I get. I like that. But um, let's go to the big ones, the big three. Mm-hmm. So we had best actor in a leading role. Mm-hmm. The nominees. This is my favorite. The nominees were tough. I'm not gonna lie. We had your boy DiCaprio, Once Upon a Time, Adam Driver, Marriage Story, and they showed the only best clip. Of Adam Driver, that made me look at that movie a different way. If like I really want to go back at home. And watch it. This is the one guy that didn't enjoy marriage. Yeah, Story. I was. Just, it, it didn't hit me. But when I saw that one clip, I was like, "Damn, I gotta go back and watch it." I think you need to go back and watch it in I general because you your it. opinion on that has been very far fetched from like, everybody else's wow, opinion, which I'm cool with. That. Yeah, um, but it's weird because that shit is right up your alley. That's yeah, exactly yeah, what you like. I just, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. I got. I'm definitely gonna go back though. After I saw that one clip, go back when they showed that clip of Adam Driver going off, and I was like, I forgot about that. Holy shit, he did. I thought say he was great. I thought Scarlett was great. I thought the supporting cast was great. Like, I, I don't. I don't get what you found wrong with it. And again, uh, it's right up your. It's like a fucking rom com. Uh, That's what you love. Well, we should do like a whole talk. Rom com drama. Yeah, dramedy. Rom, yeah, yeah, rom, yeah, yeah. rom, drum, rom, drum, rom, no, I like that. We're, we're creating new genres here. <laughs> so, and then Antonio Banderas with Pain and Glory, which is a film that kind of slipped through the cracks for me. I don't ever recall even knowing about this film until last night. Yeah. Um, and usually up on it. Um, and I, I, when I saw him there, I was like, I mean, you said it in one of our other podcasts, but I feel like you you slacked a little bit this year. I yeah, think after yeah, Avengers, I saw most of them. I've, after Avengers came out, I think you just kind of tapped out on I played, everything. I played catch up, uh, probably in like. Did December. you did you go into like a seasonal depression after <laughs> Avengers Endgame? I feel like when that bubble burst, you were kind of like, you know what, fuck all this there's, shit. There's really nothing left to look forward to after that. <laughs> but like, no, but there was so much to look forward to this year. But I did I did play catch up like November December. I played catch up, so I saw yeah, most yeah, of these yeah. movies. I did notice that. I did not see Pain and Glory. Um, I, I just watched see... Two Popes for the first time, and it was actually really good. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't see that, but I did see uh, Once Upon a Time. I did see Joker. I did see Marriage Story. I did see a lot of the other ones. Um, and I think Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, come on. Standing ovation. He deserved this reward. No one outacted him last year. No, 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 no. No one outacted him. No, and I no. mean, physically, mentally, he no. was prepared for this role. I agree. Um, and he took it to a different place than where Heath Ledger had taken it all those years ago. And. It was a no-brainer. If he would have lost this, I probably would have turned off the awards. 
Yeah, I would have been pretty upset if they gave that one to uh, Bong Jung. Uh, was it like? B- I feel like they were ready to give it to him. It's like he's not even an actor. He's a he's a director. <laughs> they gave him everything. They're like, no, bro. we're gonna give it to him. He, him it's him a clean everything. sweep tonight. Like we we don't want anyone else winning. <laughs> Um, no, but yeah, Joaquin, he definitely deserved that. Um, they're gearing up for Joker too, so so they say. So I'm very looking forward to, to see what they what they do with that. Well deserved, man. Yeah. I, like I love to see all the recognition he's getting and um, a great speech. I thought he gave an incredible speech, yeah. one of the goat speeches of yeah. our generation, in yeah. my opinion. I, like I think that'll be remembered for a long time. Um, and, and then. Uh, Acting, leading actress. Yes. Let's another huge, huge category. So we got Charlize Theron for mm. Bombshell, murdered it. Just incredible job. Uh, the transformation as we've come to expect from her, mm-hmm. physically and like emotionally. Mm-hmm. I thought she did a fan chat, fantastic job uh, transforming into Megyn Kelly. She looked just like her. Yeah. Um. So yeah. we got Charlize, Suarez Ronan for Little Women, uh, Scarlett Johansson, Marriage Story, mm-hmm, which uh, is a shocker. Sit. She didn't win that. That she didn't win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cynthia Revo, uh, Revo for um, Harriet. Another shocker. That she didn't win. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of surprised she didn't get anything last night. Um, yeah. And the winner, of course, Renee Zellweger Renee Zell- for uh, Judy as who, her uh, role des- for Judy Garland. Who deserves it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. she's put in a lot of work. Yeah. She's been in the industry for yep. a very long time. Happy uh, to see her winning. And you can't be mad. At you. I wouldn't have been mad at any of those. Yeah. At any one of the um, nominees. So maybe the little woman one. You're I no. I'm not here for that little women slander. I'm not here for no, it. No, I'm not saying that it's you not. You haven't seen it. What I'm looking at. Like looking, D says, D's over no, there watching. He's listen, waiting in, in, in anticipation. What, like D always says, if you didn't watch it, don't come no, for no, it. No, no, no. What I'm going by is I'm looking at experience. I'm looking at I'm looking at the names on this thing and I'm like I get that. You know what I mean? I'm I'm looking at that. I'm not looking at talent. Can I'm you not... just watch it and then talk to yeah, me? Please. I, of course. You watch Little Women? I peeped a little bit of it. Oh wow. It, like it, I it's more never, I would have never it's more in your avenue. That's why I feel like I you would, would stomach it. it more. I would watch it. Not that there's anything wrong but with like, I'm a looking bunch at, of women. Like, I'm looking you know, at experience. Timothy Chalamet's in that. Oh, my yeah, boy. Your boy, your boy. That's my boy. The king? The king? That's the he's the fucking king, bro. The king? No. Um yeah, keep going. No, no, I just I'm just looking at experience. I'm not saying no one's they're not talented. Of course, they're all talented. Fuck Otherwise, the experience. They be look at the performance. Yeah, performance. I'm looking at the experience in the fuck performance experience. experience in the performance. Hey, sometimes that beginner's luck be hitting, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, um, we see it all the time. People come on the scene and they crush it first uh, first time uh, out. What's his face? Um, Affleck's brother when he beat Denzel. Oh yeah, um, that was a shocker. Yeah, a lot of people think he deserved that it. That was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. was a, um, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Casey Affleck. That was yep, Casey. Yep, wasn't yep. It? Casey. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He beat. Uh, he beat. Uh, for fences. He beat Denzel in for fences. Yeah, there was a few ki- people in that category yeah. where I was like, really? Yeah. Like, um, so yeah, we we'll keep him rolling. The biggest, biggest one of the night, obviously, best film. Mm. Um, the nominees, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No shocker there. All the big ones. No shocker here. We got yeah. 1917, Marriage Story, Little Women, Joker, Jojo Rabbit, The Irishman, and uh, Ford versus Ferrari. And, of course, the winner, Parasite. Bong no Joon surprise Ho. there. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the night, you kind of knew that it was going to be one after the other. Um, I, I don't hate it. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm here I'm, for it. I'm proud. I'm proud that you know the Oscars or the Academy Awards are. are they're looking, progressing. Yeah, they're looking at everything. Yeah, international film coming in and taking over, taking the award, the big award is, it, it's a great honor. I'm, I'm cool with it. I don't. All these movies were great. Every single one of these movies, and I have seen all these movies except for 1917 and Little Women. And what's the what's the quote that was it Thanos that he says he's like you started you started it and uh, what does he say he's like you kind of began the the summit and I'm here to finish it or something like that. No, I, don't, that's, that's not I feel that's like cool. that's like what Roma is like looking at at Parasite like yeah because Roma did they did they win it last year or they they won one of the big awards last year. Roma, I think Roma did win it last year. Yeah, and that's that was another foreign film. So yeah. um, I feel like they kind of started the fire and Parasite just like blew it up. Um, good to see. I mean, it's good to see. Like, uh, again, like you know me, I'm not, I'm not big on like one I film. I, I, I mean, I cleaning don't, house. I don't think, I don't think Irishman 
Deserve I it. wanted to see Irishmen get like one of the like makeup call like one of the bones that we were talking about. Yeah. I would have loved to see them get like set design or fucking visual effects or something. Or even even like I said, or even the. Uh, I thought supporting. Scorsese did a fantastic job as supporting. like directing. Like was it, he in the director? Nomination? He was in the director nomination. Yeah, that's where. Uh, the, um, oh, we missed that one. We didn't how did even, we miss that? Yeah, one? we didn't even talk about that. Let's talk about that. Like with Parasite winning the big award and also uh, Bong Joon Ho winning winning best director, and pretty much. Praising and quoting Martin Scorsese about you know where he started. Yeah, I mean he started as a film student praising the work of Martin Scorsese, and he came full circle that night. And he was in a category with him and ended up beating him. Ends up beating him. Him and Tarantino. Yeah, and it was dope to see. Honestly, like that kind of really shifted my perspective on the whole situation. Like I was really happy to see. That and then, and it was good to see him give the standing ovation to Scorsese yeah. real quick. Stor- Scorsese stood up, like everyone the stood up. Room. He took a bow. I think that was a great moment for Scorsese. And for yeah. me, it was like a consolation. Like mm. Scorsese didn't win anything. Irishman didn't win anything. But I know that that spoke volumes to him. The that, whole room was that a foreign him. director is like I studied you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like I, your quote is like resonated with me yeah. my whole career. Um, so that was really dope to see. It was a really cool emotional night at yeah. the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Like there were a lot of different like heartstrings that were pulled. So I mean, it was good to see. Uh, that, that was a f- fucking great moment. I'm not gonna lie. That was one of the better moments I've seen in like Oscars history. Yeah, definitely. Um, overall, I, I I mean, if we had to give the whole show an X, where, where are we at with it? Um, I'd probably give it like a. Just because I would have liked to see a little more variety in the winners, mm-hmm. I'm going to give it like a three and a half. I was thinking the same thing. Three I would have gave that. it a four if we could have got a couple like different winners up there. I would probably give it a four and a half of the, you know, Avengers, if Avengers one, Endgame won visual effects. effects. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that one's going to eat at you, I can tell. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's always the next 10 years. Uh, uh, maybe one day the Oscars will throw Marvel a bone. The show is over, but the stink is still fresh yeah. on this one. But uh, yeah, no. Overall, I think it was a good show. Three point five. I'm with you on that. Shout I enjoyed out to, it. Shout out to D for doing the article for us on uh, WeAreCritics.com. So you guys need to make sure you guys check it out. Yo, if, check it out. If you missed it, you can just go to WeAreCritics.com and check out the Oscar recap. We have all the winners there and a little bit about what went down and what went on. Uh, and you can also check out the Instagram where we have some of the acceptance speeches and some of the greatest moments that happened uh, overall on that night. Uh, we are critics on Instagram. Check us so, out, man. Yeah, check us out. Follow, subscribe, share. Talk shit, whatever. Smash, smash those like buttons. Smash <laughs> all of them. Break them shits. But that's all I have for today. Wait, are you all saying? No, that's a, that's a wrap, bro. All right, guys. As always, this is Critics Talk. I'm clapping. We want to make sure that you wake up, be passionate, and create, create, and repeat. Repeat. We out.